Firefighters to arrive at the massive pileup on I-94 say the wreck was so big they didn't know where to start. Victims cried out for help in a twisted mass of 46 vehicles, 18 of them trucks. Mm. Three people died in the crash, a man from Chicago and a couple from Grand Rapids. More than 20 others were hurt, one critically. WSBT's Ted Land was there last night, watched it all unfold. Ted, today we're learning more about how those rescuers freed people from that mangled wreckage. Well, Cindy, firefighters used pretty much every tool in their trucks to rescue people from the twisted metal. And they made sure to use a technique that becomes very important in moments of crisis, letting people know that it'll be okay. Heading to the scene, rescuers just knew this one would be big. Well, a lot of times you can tell, believe it or not, by the tone of the dispatcher's voice. Cool Springs volunteer fire chief Mike Pollock was down there in the middle of it all. He says they didn't know where to start. There were so many vehicles, dozens of victims who were trapped. I personally started talking to him. I got to know some young lady out there. Her name was Judy. I told her, I says, I'm going to make you my priority, Judy, to get you out of this car. I took off my Nomax hood, put it on her to keep her warm. We went and got some um, blankets from the medics. We covered her up. We moved on to the next one. I got to know another young man out there. His name was Jeff. 48-year-old Jeff Rennell was in a very tricky spot, pinned between multiple semis, and firefighters were having a really tough time getting him out. An hour went by, then two hours. He was conversing real well, because I told him, I said, Jeff, it's after 5 o'clock, but when we get you out, I'm going to take you out for a beer, my friend. And he started laughing. Yeah. The temperature dropped into single digits. The sun dipped below the horizon. And as the rescue approached its fourth hour, they finally freed Jeff and took him to a waiting medical helicopter. And I kept apologizing to him. I told him, I said, Jeff, I said, you're making us work for your, our money here tonight. And he, just to make humor, to get his mind off of where he was and what was going on. In the middle of such chaos, it was a reassuring voice that the victims heard. It'll live with us forever. Yeah, that's something that you'll never forget. They kept a bus on scene so that they could bring victims or people who were trapped right away to a place where they could stay warm in such cold weather. They would then shuttle them off of the interstate to a safe place, go back and pick up more people. This mm. went on for hours until everyone was accounted for. And those mm. images, when you were out there all night last night, what stands out for you as you witnessed that and photographed it? And well, it was an alarming scene when you first arrived, but it was really quiet all evening. You could mm. tell they had a job to do, and they were doing it very methodically, very carefully. So besides just the engines and kind of the generators, you didn't really hear very much. Mm -hmm. and the Except smell the, probably too yeah. of the, the fluids. The yeah. metal being... Yeah. As exactly. They as they started pulling that. it all oh, apart. Yeah. Boy. They did quite the It'll job. It'll stay with you too, mm -hmm. won't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't forget that. Mm -mm. Thanks, Ted. Well, this